face to face and today uh, we uh, we're going to speak about uh, the social situation in Queens we are in New York City and we are still under the coronavirus pandemic and I'm with Anna Lupien who is uh, with the Queens Community House and working on the food pantry Anna welcome to face to face thank you so much for having me so maybe you can start by describing a little bit your work at the Queens Community House sure Queens Community House is a large social service organization in Queens. Uh, we serve about 25,000 participants throughout the borough. And we're founded in the settlement house tradition, which means that we serve anybody in the community who, um, who wants to engage with us. And so that means that we operate a number of programs that, are, that serve very vulnerable populations, like home delivered meals for homebound seniors, two different food pantries, eviction prevention. But we also serve programs that might have a wider audience like summer camp and after school programs, senior centers, community building and advocacy work. Uh, and the list goes on and on. We do a lot of good stuff. Yeah, so, so but today we wanted to uh, more specifically cover the, the food pantry uh, mm -hmm. issue because of the situation with the pandemic. And, and the fact that a lot of people have lost their job, have lost their income, and, mm -hmm. and, and in some way, the, the Queen's Community House is covering this social situation uh, and helping people to go by just on a day-to-day basis. Maybe you can describe a little bit what is the situation for, for the community, and then what is your work with the pantry, uh, the food pantry? So as you probably already have heard in other news segments, Queens um, and particular neighborhoods in central Queens where we're located like Corona and Jackson Heights are the epicenter of the epicenter of the epicenter of the COVID pandemic right now. So United, United States has the most cases and unfortunately the most deaths um, and then New York City within that and then these particular neighborhoods are the hardest hit even within New York City. In large part that's due to social inequities um, and very crowded housing. We're serving uh, families who are living um, in very small apartments, often with multiple families, sharing apartments, sharing bedrooms, sharing bathrooms, uh, and that's a, that exacerbates the problem of the pandemic. Uh, and then the reason they're doing that, of course, is because of economic hardship that they were experiencing well before the pandemic hit. And now with, uh, as you said, um, a total gutting of, uh, of most industries and the furloughing or laying off or the total unemployment of um, millions of Amer tens of millions of Americans, uh, the, the need is even greater than it was. Um, and let me, let me be clear that these were communities that already relied fairly heavily on um, the kinds of social services we provide, including food pantries. Um, hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers uh, utilize food pantries and soup kitchens throughout the city um, in a good year, unfortunately. I mean, that's really heartbreaking to say, but uh, the demand has increased. Um, at one of our two food pantries, the demand has increased fourfold in the last two months. I mean, to give a figure, it's, um, it was mentioned then 60% uh, of the people affected who died from the, the virus were African-American and Latino. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to give an image where Queens is a more diverse uh, zip code in the world, as, as they say. <laughs> and so uh, really the, the, the neighborhood has been uh, uh, very, very affected by the pandemic, as you describe it. So the, the, the work with, with the food pantry, and you also deliver uh, food to direct houses for elderly uh, people, no? Yes, for, we have a, a Meals on Wheels, a homebound um, elderly senior meal delivery program. And we've had that program for years and years in these neighborhoods. And that demand has also grown considerably in the last couple of months. And how is the, has the situation, the, the challenges of doing it? Because uh, how the, the protection, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the not be able to meet with the people, the difficulty there, I think it's a, it's a very logistical uh, nightmare. Yes, and, um, and a hats off to my colleagues who are on the front lines providing these services every day, um, particularly for our food pantries and our home delivered meals. 
participants, um, Queens Community House staff and volunteers might be the only people that they interact with um, for the whole day. And that social connectedness, even in the face of a pandemic and everybody wearing face masks and protective equipment and things, uh, remains really vital. Yeah, imagine, I mean, people get, get at home all day long by themselves. It's really crazy. Um, and we know that that's a big contributor to other kinds of mental health and physical health problems, particularly amongst older adults. So we work very hard to, to prevent that. So how, do, how does it work? I mean, you, you get people to, to call or people to mental health uh, staff who can, who can provide uh, um, support in some ways? Yes, we do have some mental health staff um, with us at Queens Community House, but we're really pivoting all of our staff to virtual models, um, both for the programs we, want, we run for older adults, like our senior centers, as well as for other age groups, like our English classes for adult learners um, and our after school, you know, our youth programming, our young adult job training programming. A lot of those um, staff members who were running programs in person are now making phone-based wellness checks um, to families on a, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. And not only does that offer um, social connectedness, but we have a robust database of resources to offer, either through internal referrals, or we can refer to um, government or partner sure. nonprofit agencies yeah. to provide services that, that we're not um, currently providing. And now, how you face the challenges of provide, getting the food all together? It's becoming a, a big challenge. I know New York City mayor uh, nominated Czar for the food country, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, who, who, who run also uh, the, the, the school uh, have been transformed of uh, food distribution center. So how you, um, as an organization, have uh, access to food? Because it seems to be more and more complicated every day. It is more complicated every day and it is changing um, as the pandemic continues and as government agencies, and like you mentioned, the food czar, who's also the commissioner of sanitation for New York City, um, as her office scales up, things are changing. And so we are in constant communication with our government partners to make sure that we are um, passing along the right messages to the participants we serve. Uh, particularly for our older adults who aren't getting the text message updates and the social media updates quite at the same pace um, as other populations. Yes, yes. Um, but I'll also say that for our two food pantries, um, as I mentioned, we've been scaling them up rather rapidly. Um, and we are relying on the supply chains that we've always utilized for food donations and food purchasing um, places like the Food Bank for New York City, as well as the city and state government entities that provide emergency food assistance. Uh, and we know also that there are hundreds of food pantries doing the same thing throughout the city. So there are these bottlenecks and we've also turned to local partners, elected officials offices, even school districts who have um, excess food to share with us. Uh, and so we're making it work uh, as one, one big community. Yeah, so what is your relation with elected officials, with the city, with, uh, uh, do you get any support for them or do you get funding for them or do you get logistical help uh, during this time or they are pretty distant and, and, and have difficulty to face the situation? <laughs> um, I will say yes to all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so um, any of your viewers who aren't familiar with how nonprofits operate in the United States and particularly in New York City might be interested to know that we are mostly government funded. Um, and that mostly comes in the form of contracts. So this, for us in particular, it's mostly city contracts, but also some state and federal contracts where they, we apply um, to offer a particular service that they want offered, but feel like this, the government itself cannot run, um, such as uh, a, a workforce development program for um, teenagers and young adults who are out of school and out of work. And we say we can offer it, this is how we would do it, this is our staffing structure, and then we're paid um, to do it. So those contracts um, 
have been generally flexible in this time where we can work with our, our funding agencies, our city and state agencies to say, look, we, we were doing this in person. Now we're doing it this way um, remotely. And, they, and as long as we're, we're really getting the work done nonetheless, that, that has continued fairly smoothly. Um, but we also, of course, work with our elected officials and appointed officials um, at all levels of government, because at the end of the day, they care about the well-being of their constituents and we improve and support yeah. the well-being yeah. of their constituents. So and we generally have very good themselves. relationships yeah. with them. Yeah. So um, having said that, uh, mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the future? Because the situation is <laughs> getting very complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the money uh, for the city and the state is getting drastically shorter. And, and I know it's going to be a lot of cuts uh, coming next. And I think the budget is coming in July. And then so after mm -hmm. that, we end up in the new uh, in your new year for the city. So how, how do you see uh, uh, this yes. affecting uh, the, the community at large? Because uh, I think some priorities are going to have to, and some lines going to have to be, to be cut. So um, how, how, do you, um, how are you going to work this out? That's a great question. Um, new York City in particular is very dependent on the tax revenue from the financial services industry, more so than other parts of the United States. And um, this COVID crisis and the mayhem uh, it has caused in the stock market means that the city is in a really tough the spot, situation. as is the state. Uh, as I mean, and obviously, like we're talking about a global recession, so nobody's nobody's in the clear, but. Yeah. Um, we're feeling it particularly here. And so we're bracing for a real austerity budget. We've been advocating uh, for essential services to remain intact. And we see a lot of the programming we offer as essential, things like the Summer Youth Employment Program, which has already been announced. It will be um, disbanded for this yeah. summer. It, it's one very good example of something we're very concerned about. Summer Youth Employment provides uh, job training, mentorship, um, and uh, job and life skills for 75,000 wow. young adult New Yorkers every summer. It's the largest youth workforce program in the country. And um, for most of these young people, it's their first job. It, it's, it's a first connection the to with a social situation in some way. To, yeah, to they're get. learning on the job skills. Yeah. They they leave the program with a resume, which they didn't have before. They learn about how to look for and find positions. Uh, and they also learn a lot about themselves and what kind of work they might be interested in doing in the future. It broadens horizons. Families who already depended on that summer youth employment wage for the household's financial well-being are being doubly hurt by the cancel cancellation of this summer program. Yeah. And this is just one of many that we're concerned about losing entirely. So, so before we, we, we wrap up, um, mm -hmm. you were trying to replace this program by doing, by engaging the, the students to help in, in other ways during the summer? Yeah, so we, we present a plan to provide a summer training program that is, um, that is virtual or uh, appropriately socially distanced, depending on where we are in the beginning of July when the program would traditionally launch. Um, we're prepared to do um, phone-based training, so uh, how, how, learning how to be a customer service representative over the phone and things like that. Um, and actually even internally here at Queens Community House, we're moving one of our two food pantries to an appointment-based system and we're using those young adults who would be in summer youth employment yeah. and other job training programs to man the phone lines for making the appointments. Yeah. So we're finding synergies uh, in a lot of places. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. Um, okay, so to wrap up a little bit, how can people help the Queen's Community House? Can they fight for the COVID-19 and call the elected <laughs> official and so on and so forth? I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. Give us a little bit uh, uh, the, the, so the speech. You can... You can um, Learn more on our website, which is qchnyc.org. We have a number of different ways you can support us. 
obviously financial contributions are leveraged to the fullest extent and, and support some really vital programming happening right now. But we also are looking for volunteers to do uh, friendly visiting, calling um, uh, homebound seniors and building relationships with them so to lessen their social isolation. If, you're, if you live nearby, we even have volunteer opportunities at our food pantries uh, if, you're, if you're able to. Um, and then of course, yes, we're always interested in engaging the, the worldwide community in advocacy, calling your elected officials and letting them know that these programs that serve vulnerable populations cannot be cut. These vulnerable, vulnerable populations, low-income people, youth, um, parents trying to homeschool their kids, they're already just barely hanging on. And if we further cut these programs to close budget holes, we are sowing the seeds of problems that will manifest in, in years in to come. Many years away, and violence gonna be, is going to be very complicated to deal with. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your uh, for participating. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. That was face to face, and please keep watching your news on, on presenza.com. And we hope to see you and hear from you very soon. Thank you very much again.